Hello everybody and welcome to this morning's broadcast brought to you by Still Pond and Betterton United Methodist Churches. This is Pastor Bill reminding you that a video of today's program will be available on our website stillbetterchurch.org later on this afternoon. We thank you for your kind gifts towards the ministries of these two churches and we encourage you to continue your support either through the mail or by using the secure online giving option that's found on the website. We hope everyone will enjoy this Memorial Day weekend by spending time with family and friends, but don't forget to give tribute to the men and the women who have given their greatest sacrifice of their lives in defense of our nation's freedom. Honor their military service with praise and thanksgiving, and pray for their families as they remember their lost loved ones. So let us begin today's program with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your protection and your providence in the world we now inhabit. In our struggle, we, you've been steadfast in keeping us safe. And in our fear, you've given us faith for the journey. In our complaints, you've offered us hope for the future. How can we ever thank you for being with us each step of the way during our struggles? By your Spirit, Lord, help us to reveal your presence as we continue our journey toward your kingdom. And guide us with the fire of your love as we witness to the grace and the truth that is your Son, Jesus. We ask it in his name, as he taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to open your uh, Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 7. Today we're going to read three short verses, verses 37 to 39. This is John 7, verses 37 to 39. And as you look for that passage in your Bible, let me tell you that during Sukkot, which is a Jewish festival of the tabernacles, Jesus promises the wisdom of the Holy Spirit will come to the disciples. And little did they know, it will come after Christ's death and his resurrection. It will come during another important festival on the Jewish calendar. So let us read together the word of God according to John when it reads at verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the festival, which was Sukkot, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from within him. And by this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From the lyrics of Edwin Hatch, let us pray. Breathe on us, breath of God, fill us with life anew. That way we may, know, <clears throat> pardon me, that we may love what Thou dost love, and do what Thou wouldst do. Breathe on us, breath of God, till we are wholly Thine, till all these earthly parts of us glow with Thy fire divine. Amen. Today is Pentecost. And from the book of Acts chapter 2, we know that the promised Holy Spirit of God descended upon the disciples like tongues of fire. And by that Spirit, the disciples, though they were Gentiles, or though they were from Galilee, pardon me, though they had no real formal education, they began speaking in the languages of many Jews who had made the pilgrimage to Jerusalem from all over the, the, the world. Pentecost gets its name from the 50 days that have been passed since the Passover. And along with Passover, as, or the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the booths or shelters, what the Jews call today Sukkot, Pentecost is one of the big three festivals of the Hebrew worship. Passover commemorates the deliverance of Israel from slavery at the hands of the, of the Egyptians. And it also honors what we call propitiation, where death passed over the nation of Israel by the sacrifice of the lamb and its blood being painted on the doorposts of their homes. This sacrifice is relived in the crucifixion of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who shed his blood for us. 
who gave his life for us on the cross during that very same festival week held nearly 2,000 years ago. And we know that three days later, Christ rises from the dead and he walks among the disciples and believers, proving God's authority has been given unto him. He continues to move in the lives of those who come to know him. And then he ascends into heaven to prepare a place in his Father's house for all believers, then and now. But before he goes, he promises the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will come and accompany each of us in our earthly journey. Now, the festival weeks, which is Pentecost, marks the first time when this happens. And people from all over Jerusalem came to the uprising to the sound of a powerful wind only to find these ordinary men from Galilee speaking the word of God in languages that they had never spoken before. Today we read a passage from the time when Jesus had previously attended the third of those major festivals, Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, and where Pentecost marks the end of the wheat harvest in the spring. This festival is held in late September, early October, and marks the end of the entire year's harvest. It is an eight-day event, and a convocation is held on the first day and on the last day, what we heard in today's passage as being the great day. Sukkot is a joyous celebration, and part of the great day festivities include a libation ceremony where the priests will gather water from Jerusalem's Pool of Siloam, and they'll gather it in a gold pitcher and carry it to the temple in a parade-like setting. Now, the priest then pours the water into a silver bowl near the altar and makes a supplication. He prays to God. He asks a question. He asks for rain for the next year's growing season. You know, as dry as it's been around here these past few weeks, perhaps we should do the same thing. In today's scripture passage, on that last day of the Sukkot celebration, in the middle of the temple ceremony of water, Jesus stands up crying out, let anyone who's thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. Now, this really shook things up. And some people spoke saying, you know, this man must be a prophet or he, he must be the Messiah. And then this argument ensues. You know, the crowd became divided on what to believe. Isn't it funny how arguments and divisions sometimes happen in all religious settings, even today? Jesus points to an Old Testament passage from Proverbs 18.4, which says, The words of of a man's mouth are deep waters. In other words, they are filled, they are still and without action. And the fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook, meaning it is active, it's alive, it cannot be contained. You see, God's wisdom will flow from the believer's heart. And this wisdom is like a river of living water. But this truth cannot come from just anybody. It must come from someone who believes in Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit has descended upon and dwells within the believer. Paul once said, and we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. When the Spirit descended upon the disciples during Pentecost, they began speaking in various languages. And when all the Jews listened, some heard the message and they believed, while others just called them drunk. You know, now, in that that situation, who do you think had the Spirit of God working in them at that very moment? And who do you think was just trying to figure out things on their own? Christ promises all who thirst for God, and all who thirst for God now, can come to Him and drink. You know, it's convenient that just before Jesus goes to Jerusalem for the festival of the tabernacles, he feeds the 5,000 men and their families with just five loaves of bread and, and two fish. Pentecost occurs as a celebration of the wheat harvest, and bread is a major part of that temple ceremony. The Sukkot celebration is held at the end of the summer, and water is a major part of that ceremony. In John 6, 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. We've all heard the term bread and water. It's a term long associated with prison food. The definition of the term is the bare essentials for life. Christ is pointing out to all who will hear him, who truly hear him, 
that he is the bread, and the Holy Spirit is the water of life everlasting. By taking in Jesus, the word of God, we are nourished by God's truth. And God's gift to us when we accept his only begotten son as our Lord and Savior is that the spirit will pour out the understanding and the wisdom behind the truth. It will refresh us. As Christians, we receive the bread that is Christ and the living water that is the Holy Spirit. These are the bare essentials for life everlasting. This is not prison food. This is the food and drink that delivers us out of our cap captivity unto sin. And God's spirit cannot be held back. Jesus says that out of our hearts shall flow rivers of living water. This living water is the gospel of truth that the disciples were able to preach in all kinds of languages. And they couldn't be stopped. Early in the book of Acts, Luke tells us that 500 people had seen the risen Christ and believed in him. And in one sermon by, by Peter, delivered just after Pentecost, 3,000 people heard the wisdom of God being revealed to them, and they turned their lives over to the Lord. Jesus had once promised his disciples that as a church, they would, be, they would do even greater things than these. And only by the Holy Spirit is that possible. Jesus says that out of the overflow of one's heart, the mouth will speak. So what's flowing out of your heart? Is it contempt or compassion? Are they words that lead to an argument or words of healing and forgiveness? Is what you are feeling, is it fear or is it faith? You see, you just can't damn up the word of God unto yourself. If you open your heart to the Spirit's will, if you allow yourself to be guided by the truth, that is Jesus Christ, you might be surprised of the kindness and the wisdom that wells up in you and flows from within your own heart. Let us pray. Gracious God, we believe your Son, Jesus, is our Savior, and we accept your presence into our lives by the Holy Spirit. We ask, dear Lord, that you help us to respond to the calling of your Spirit in our daily living. And as the Spirit falls afresh upon us, let it flow like living waters from our hearts into others. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's closing thought. About 20 miles northeast of, northeast of Philadelphia, on the New Jersey side of the Delaware River, sits the National Gypsum Company's wallboard manufacturing plant in Burlington. Gypsum is shipped to this plant on barges being pushed up the river by tugboats as they wind their way up the snake-like Delaware towards the offloading facility. Now, though the river is about a thousand feet wide, the shipping channel is relatively narrow, sometimes less than a hundred feet in width. Navigation along this section of the Delaware is treacherous as tugs and barges need to steer clear of the shoal areas situated just outside of the channel, or they could run aground. For several years, I and the boat captain I worked with had surveyed the channel and the offloading facility at the gypsum plant. And on our trip up the river, the captain pointed out lighted buoys anchored along the bend points of the river. And just behind each of them, on the shore, were matching lighted towers. He said that the tugboat captains would line up the lights of the buoy and the tower on the shore to navigate safely within the channel as they moved barges up the river. And when the lights did not line up, chances were pretty good that the barges would drift outside of the channel and run aground into shallow waters. Our journey towards the kingdom of God requires the same navigational lights. Jesus is the light of the world. He came down from heaven and buoyed himself within our lives to show us the way through a treacherous world. And he promises us the Holy Spirit the flaming tongues of fire as a beacon to correct our paths. If we are to navigate through the winding paths of this earthly reality, we need the direction of Christ to show us the way. And we need the correction of the Holy Spirit to keep us aligned within the channel of God's love. Otherwise, we will drift into a shallow existence that usually leads to sin. Friends, as you make your way in life's journey, don't try to guess where the path to heaven is. 
the way has been charted by Jesus and by the Holy Spirit to give you safe passage unto the Father. Keep your eyes focused on these beacons of hope. Steer clear of sinful behavior. And like the song says, in the sweet by and by, we shall all one day meet on that beautiful shore. We hope you can join us for worship in our sanctuaries. And if you're unable to do so, we understand. You can always tune in next Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for another broadcast. And until then, go in peace. And may the peace of God go with you. Amen.